I'm giving you sad information. You will spend only 20,160 minutes of your life kissing. Maybe we only kiss for two weeks in our 60 to 90 years of life. Each kiss will take an average of 12 seconds. We're lucky in that regard. Back in the 1980s, people only kissed for 5 or 6 seconds. Today that number has doubled to an average of 12 seconds. Every time we kiss, we infect your partner with 80 million bacteria by mouth. In a study, 90% kissing cultures were found in 160 different cultures. In some cultures, kissing on the lips is considered disgusting. You may think that erotic and sexual kissing is mostly experienced in the Western Europe. Unfortunately, the highest rate of sexual kissing is 90% in Middle Eastern countries. In North America, this ratio is 55%. The rate of sexual kissing in European Union countries is 70%. The rate of sexual kissing is 73% in Asian countries and 13% in Africa. Romantic kissing tradition was not found in the research conducted in 10 cultures in Central American countries. The cultures studied were not only modern and technological cultures. People with Turkana and ancient Roman cultures from isolated societies and still living today were studied. Didn't our ancestors have this lip-to-lip -lip kissing culture? Or have we lost this culture inherited from them over time? Why do we humans kiss lip to lip? Imagine an alien watching your kiss. We kiss by doing things like sucking, rubbing, and licking with our mouth, which originally evolved for food entry. To aliens, this may sound ridiculous. There is no kissing in the animal kingdom except for a few species. We talked about bacteria, but we know that kissing is extremely beneficial for humans. There is no harm in the 80 million bacteria transmitted from kissing people to each other. These bacteria strengthen the immune systems of the couples and help them get used to their microbiomes. Kissing couples are also more likely to live a longer life together. For our kissing behavior, it means courtship, foreplay, preparation for sexual intercourse. At the moment of kissing, our waist, lips and face area, our genital area, are on fire. It is possible to see this with thermal cameras. In a kissing session, we can burn an average of 5 calories due to the increase in temperature. The reason why our genitals are stimulated is that the most neurons in our body are in our lips. Kissing triggers a burst of oxytocin, the bonding hormone, in our brain. In this case, fireworks explode in our brains. This is such a powerful hormone that men who kiss during sex don't want to kiss women after sex to avoid bonding. Women want to kiss after sex. This makes sense in terms of psychological evolution. Because it is the women who will give the baby the most effort. Therefore, they want their partners to carry this bond as well. It is a fact that women are sacred beings. Women find the quality of the kiss more important when looking for a partner. I don't know if you practice in the mirror anymore. I suggest you work by kissing your arm. During kissing, first the reward hormone dopamine, which is the scourge of drug addicts, the excitement hormone adrenaline and the happiness hormone serotonin are released. The rates of these secreted hormones prepare people for the next level of sexual intercourse. Kissing not only by women but also by men injects the hormone testosterone into the woman through saliva. This hormone jump is thought to entice women to have sex. There is research showing that men who open their mouths more when kissing use their tongues to increase women's acceptance of sex. When men and women kiss, you can feel the hardening of the nipples, the enlargement of the penis, the enlargement of the vaginal canal and the watering of the vagina. In animals, deer kiss each other with their noses, while geese kiss each other by rubbing their beaks. While bats touch each other with their tongues, elephants insert their trunks into each other's mouths. Our closest cousins, chimpanzees and bonobos, are also seen kissing lip to lip. However, they do this to avoid group fights. As we delve deeper into the animal kingdom, we see other species displaying lip to lip kissing behaviors. In this part of the story, we see the birds feeding each other by touching their beaks. We know that pigeons feed each other with their beaks. This type of feeding is scientifically called kiss feeding, which is called pyromastigation. Seagulls do this. Seagulls vomit and eat the food they chew by hitting their mother's beaks. Nutrition with this pre-chewing has always existed throughout human history. Until the 19th century, parents gave their children food that they chewed. In modern times, 
This practice is controversial but this behavior was done to strengthen the immune system of pre-modern infants and to strengthen the immune system within the tribe. In later periods, just as breastfeeding was thought to be disgusting, kiss-feeding behavior was also forgotten. It was abandoned first in Western countries, then in other affected countries. In 2012, American actress Alicia Silverstone shared a video of her baby chewing and giving food. This video was very eventful. You may find it disgusting, but it is still beneficial to our ancestors and animals. Remember, people believe what they want to believe, not what they know. Thank you very much for watching the video. Please support the channel by subscribing.